So here's a template I've been using for footwork uh, in my hand versus knife classes uh, lately. Uh, it's based on ranging footwork. So the person approaches, uh, we're gonna deal with Largo, Medio, and Corto range attacks uh, based off of ranging footwork. So the Largo is gonna be a step back with the right leg, dealing with the right side uh, of movement. Uh, the medial is going to be a side step on 90 degrees and the corto is going to be a forward diagonal in on 45 degrees so the idea being is going to start with the person taking a step towards you you want to see what they're doing so you see that oh they're getting your range you're getting some alarm bells going off in your head on this person going hey buddy what's up uh, it's not a defensive stance it's kind of a inquiry stance palms are forward look i don't have anything in my hands and i'm but i'm not staying here and i'm not stepping straight back I'm going to start off person approaches you likely to be lined up spine to spine i want to take a little step off to the side 45 degrees back so my left side may be lined up on their spine have an easier access to escape to their right hey what's going on now if they go and raise their hands then i'm going to go to a defensive stance with the you know arms either backside to them or blade side to them uh, and get my hands up guarding my eyes get ready to fight um, looking around assessing the situation if they come in and take that grab attack you know the most common knife attack uh, in the United States is a grab and stab and, and this all across Europe and other uh, developed countries is very common if people have been through the prison system this is the attack they use generally a jab cross structure or a jab uppercut structure with the jab cross being a little more common if they are used to only stab centric weapons like they would in the prison system with uh, shivs so my first step is back, just touching the hand just enough. I'm gonna hit it hard, but I'm not gonna have a lot of follow through. All I wanna do with that is displace the hand so I have a clear view of the right hand that might be holding a weapon. And I'm lined up with my center, you know, aimed up on what would be uh, in shooting terms, their center max, mass. So I'm lined up for a clear shot on their center. And my guard is still up because I don't have a weapon in my hand yet but I'm ready to shoot and I have a good view of the area to assess where's bad guy number two, where's my exit lines. Um, if they come in again, and it's, it's the bad guy's job, the, the training part of bad guy, to reset themselves. I don't go back to the good guy spot. It's their job to move and face me, all right, which is more realistic. If they come in slightly deeper, especially if they miss, I sidestep that and then come in for a hit, something about a grab. When someone tries to grab you, they're they're waiting for some physical contact in the palm of the hand, and then I'm gonna grab. Grab your clothing, grab your throat, grab the back of your neck, wherever. Uh, grab your shoulder. So your tactile reaction time is faster than your visual reaction time. If I sidestep that without giving a heavy block, but I simply sidestep and hit, they're relying on visual reaction time to, to see what's going on. They don't have any tactile feedback that they missed. So they hunt for the grab a little longer. That buys me another quarter second, half second to get my hit. Generally I tell people is you do the hit that's best for you. So again, someone my height or shorter, that's probably gonna be a backhand to the face, eyes, ears, whatever, high shot into the head. If they're significantly taller than you, especially, you go underneath, maybe hit to the groin, maybe uppercut to the ribs. Uh, if they're a lot heavier than you and you don't have a good body shot, I've also taught, take your thumb, grab the pectoral muscle with the thumb and the auxiliary nerve, and just use that to get behind them so you can hit, you know, grab, uh, slap the ears, grab a handful of hair, whatever, get a hold of them, step on a knee, step on a kick the Achilles tendon, something to slow them down, get a handful of eye socket, try to get a lot taller than you before you can, can't get to their eye sockets, rip them down, and then get some distance and get the weapons or get the escape route. Let's turn, I'm gonna go back to the good guy spot just to stay in camera range, but it's really the training partner's job to turn and face you. Then the third one is I take a longer lunge in, so you really have to Take care of this deeply so i come in and i go in 45 degrees come in and get to hit and again whatever hits appropriate depending on their relative size 
So the three movements are going to be step back 45 at largo range, step in 90 degrees at medial range. If they're a little deeper, they can make contact with you. And if then if they're charging and you're basically charging the ambush or attacking the ambush, because you're charging in while they're charging in, you're decreasing their ability to have good reaction time because they're moving forward 30 miles an hour, you're moving 30 miles an hour, combined speed is 60 miles an hour, less reaction time, uh, less time for them to react, and you should be able to get a good hit, forceful hit. You're going just past them, so you're not colliding chest to chest and getting tangled up with the person, get a chance to hit, hit, and then draw, you know, whatever your weapon is. So that's our basic template off the grab, which is the precursor to the grab and stab.